Hey everybody, I have another laser video for you guys. This one is going to be an overview of the Sanwoo Lasers Challenger 2 1.2 watt 525 nanometer green laser. That's right, this is a 1 watt green laser. This thing will probably be a monster. I look forward to showing it to you guys. Now, like I said, this is going to be an overview. I'm going to try to keep this one shorter. I know some of my other laser videos could go as long as 15 minutes, but I'm doing more overviews and leaving the more technical reviews to the folks at Laser Pointer Forums now, so I'm going to try to keep this one under 8 minutes if possible. But yeah, this one is going to hopefully be a monster of a laser. So big thanks to Sanwoo Lasers for sending out this unit for the video. It retails on their site for $380. It operates on one 18650 battery, but there's a catch to that. It has to be a bit of a longer 18650 because this battery cavity is pretty long and for it to make contact on both sides, you have to have an 18650 that's somewhere between 69 to 70 millimeters. So I had a pretty tough time finding one. All of my 18650s were too short, every single one of them. However, I did find this one. It's it's an 18650 battery that has a little built-in like mini USB, so you can just charge it with a cord. You don't need a battery charger. As long as you have a mini USB cord, you could charge it. Pretty cool concept. I've never had a battery like this, but this was the only one I could find that was long enough at my local battery store anyway. So if you're looking for a battery for this one, this battery did work for me. So according to Sanwoo, this host is made of a nickel copper alloy. It does have an adjustable focus near the top and then just below that you can unscrew it to access the battery cavity and it can also be unscrewed at the very bottom to get to the battery cavity. The button on the very bottom of the laser is push on, push off. Uh, you don't need to hold down the button. And there's also little holes on the very bottom of the laser if you wanted to attach something like a strap or a lanyard. The battery goes into the laser with the positive end towards the diode, negative end towards the button. And there's also threads on the very top of the laser for attachments such as a beam expander. And the laser I have here is single mode, but the Challenger 2 webpage does say that if your laser is over 1 watt, you can also order it in multi-mode operation. So I'm going to move on to show you guys this laser in some different lighting levels, starting off with indoors in a somewhat dimly lit setting. And this thing is just a monster of a laser. Make sure you're wearing your laser protection glasses because this laser is extremely bright. The beam's completely visible sideways, down the axis of the laser, everything. Completely visible beam. There's no point where you can't see the beam. Moving on to outdoors during the daytime, and this one's pretty cool. The beam is actually visible looking down the axis of the laser and even kind of looking at it diagonally too, which is not something I ever see with any of my lasers. A beam that's visible in daylight, that's that's pretty darn good in my opinion. Uh, the divergence, it's tough to see all the way down there. Uh, pretty much on par with what I thought I was going to see from this laser. Um, if I, if I was just eyeballing it, I know I'm somewhere around 200 to 250 feet away from that rock wall. And it looks like maybe 6 inches for that dot, the size of that dot down there. Completely just eyeballing it, but pretty much on par with what I thought I was going to get. And now moving on to nighttime. And this beam is just magnificently bright. What you're seeing here is a side-by-side -side comparison of, on the left-hand side, the 1.2 watt Challenger 2. And on the right hand side, a 100 milliwatt, um, just a laser 303 type diode. And this one just completely blows it out of the water. This one's so, so visible. You have to wear your laser safety glasses and obviously practice all proper laser safety techniques and everything. Um, this one's just crazy bright. You aim this in the sky at nighttime, especially on a foggy night, and your neighbors will see this thing. Now, previously, the brightest laser I ever reviewed, the most visible one, was the 7 watt striker. Many of you have seen that video. This one is very, very bright, but I'm going to give you guys a side by side comparison of nighttime beam shots. And I personally still think the 7 watt striker looks more visible. I know for a fact that the camera will definitely make it look more visible, um, but just to the naked eye here, I still see the blue one being more visible. Um, maybe some of you guys that own a 7 watt blue and a 1.2 watt green can give me your opinions, but I've used the online calculators before that say I believe that the 1.2 watt green is supposed to be brighter than this 7 watt blue. I'm just really not seeing it though, I think the blue still wins out. But anyways, I'm going to move on to the LPM test now with the Laser BA LPM and test number 1. 
is peaking out at around 1370 milliwatts, 1 1.37 watts, and that's from a cold start with the fully charged battery. Test number two, sitting around 1.26 watts, uh, 1260 milliwatts. Test number three, very close, about 1240 milliwatts or 1 1.24 watts. So all on par with that advertised power rating of 1.2 watts, even a little bit over. Um, and I got similar tests to, I kept the test going, but I'm not going to show you guys six or seven tests, but I did get similar results on subsequent tests. So as promised, here are some foggy room shots. This is what it looks like compared to that 100 milliwatt DPSS laser. And this 1.2 watt direct diode laser completely blows it out of the water in a foggy room. That beam is just a solid chunk. You can't see through that thing. You can't see any particles. That thing is just a solid chunk of a beam. Um, looks really good. I can't wait until I get a foggy night to test out this laser. As you guys saw the nighttime shots I did earlier, um, you could kind of see some particles flowing in the air. It wasn't as solid like it is now in the fog. So definitely looks really good and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like compared to that 7 watt laser too. I'm going to have to be as careful as I can here not to burn my house down so I did set up something for the lasers to point at so they're not causing any fires. And I don't know, I, I still say what I said earlier, I see the blue beam winning out in visibility. In my personal opinion, it just, it still really looks more visible than the green one, even though the online calculator told me that the green one should be more visible, but it's just my opinion. I'm going to move on to now burning some things with this 1.2 watt laser. I have my focal point, which is very visible because I still have a bunch of fog in the room. I'm just going to light up some matches here. It instantly makes quick work of those matches. And I'm going to flip one around and see what we can do to the wooden side of the match, the side that does not have the little igniter. And after just a few seconds, I am able to light that side on fire as well. Next up, I have a little piece of paper here, and this is a sort of do not try this at home type of moment. Um, I end up causing a little bit of a fire here on the paper. I didn't really notice how much it was on fire and I let it probably ignite more than I should have, which is why I keep water on hand at all times. Uh, next up is a small block of wood, just to show you guys that it can etch on a small block of wood, not necessarily light it on fire spontaneously, but do small etchings. And last up, a piece of black electric tape, which of course it just cuts through like butter. So this laser, I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. It met my expectations. It was super bright. It was insane. It's just a, a complete lightsaber of a laser. And what's great about this one is you get all the visibility of the 7 watt blue without the insane dangerousness. I mean, this one's still very dangerous, but this one's not going to instantly burn down my home. Whereas the blue one, I am just genuinely afraid of the 7 watt blue. I don't even like putting the batteries in that thing because that thing's just so powerful. Um, for the duty cycle on this one, I found that on a completely cold start, it got very warm to the touch after about 90 seconds, and then the duty cycle that I was operating under was after that initial 90 seconds, I would leave it off for a few minutes, like two minutes or maybe even three, operate it for 45 to 60 seconds continuously, and then another two or three minutes off and just repeat that process. That's the duty cycle I operated under, um, and that's, I guess, what I'd suggest. Uh, if there's any questions you have that you think I might have left out of this video, please leave them in the comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the video. I really enjoyed using this laser and I thought it was a beast of a laser. So visible with just, it, it was just great. I loved it. So if you guys enjoyed this video at all, hit that like button down below. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And as always guys, thank you for watching.